All right, we're on. Happy Sunday. Um, thank you all for joining. Apologies that we had some technical difficulties and we're starting 10 minutes late. Today I'd like to talk about the life of aestheticism or the aesthetic life. So uh, as any good, you know, 2020 person does when you're trying to find the official definition of something, uh, the first thing I did was Google it. And so if you actually go to dictionary.com and you say, what does the word aesthetic mean? Aesthetic mean? It literally, what, I think the clearest definition is that it is a person that leads a very simple life, abstains from normal pleasures, and denies himself or, her, or herself. Denies themselves. And at the core of what we're going to talk about today is God's uh, desire and uh, to teach us how to live a more virtual life by, by denying ourselves and enabling Christ to work through us as our self minimizes. So, and we're going to talk about first a uh, saint story. We're going to talk about the story of Saint Marina the ascetic, and then we're going to talk about a few verses in um, in Luke that really uh, that really go to the heart of wha what an ascetic life is in terms of the words of Christ and how you achieve it how you achieve it. Starting with the life of St. Marina, and I have uh, a daughter um, named Marina, so I was excited to use her as, a, as an example today. Um, and I, you know, we often talk about this story, right? We often talk about, okay, and I, if I were to remember what I told Marina the first time I learned the story, it was, oh, you know, St. Marina, she was born in a really rich family, Unfortunately, her mother passed away when she was really young, and so her dad wanted to be a monk, and she uh, and he didn't know how to how to put her in a nunnery. So they gave all their riches away, and they moved into the monastery. And she shaved her head, and she lived as a monk with her dad, um, you know, that uh, in the cell for ten years, basically, until he passed away. And that's a core part of the story, and and I think a lot of the Anytime you read the story of St. Marina, one of the first things that gets highlighted is that the, the contrast of them coming from a very rich family, giving everything away to live the monastic life, to live in a cave, and her being so extreme in so doing that she shaved her head and lived as a monk. But, you know, the, actually, what's really, really amazing about the, the rest of the story is that she denied herself in every way in order to let Christ she work through her, right? And so, in, um, and that's a really core part of what the, the, the essence of an aesthetic life is. It is denying yourself to enable Christ. So uh, the rest of the story for St. Marina is about, you know, after her father died, so after she'd been in the monastery for about 10 years, she left the monastery to do a few uh, errands, basically, and she went and she stayed in um, an inn. And that same night, there was a soldier that stayed in the inn, and basically, long story short, the innkeeper's daughter got pregnant. And the innkeeper's daughter didn't want to implicate the soldier because she was afraid of the retribution. So she said that it was um, the monk that had basically gotten her pregnant. So then the innkeeper goes to the abbot of the monastery and basically says, you know, this, your monk got my daughter pregnant. This is ridiculous. And, and so um, when the abbot, uh, you know, basically approaches Marina on this, Marina would have had every ability to deny it. She, at that point, could have been like, look, I've been hiding this from you all along, but I'm not a man, I'm a woman. And so there's like no way I can get her pregnant. So yeah, keep looking. But that was not what she did. She actually says, I have sinned, forgive me. That was her response. That was her response. And you know, so a lot of times we think about moments of response, right? Like being calm in the face of you know, when the kids do something, you know, you wake up, you're tired, and then you realize the kids have have have, uh, have drawn all over the walls. 
being calm in those moments of response. Marina's ability, St. Marina's ability to be, to deny every element of herself in that moment is, tr is purely due to the true ascetic life she was living. She had, she had up to that point learned to deny so much of herself, herself, not just her stuff, not just her conveniences, but also the fact that she was a woman, you know, and, and just live completely at the uh, desire, at the guidance of Christ. It's, it's really amazing. It's really amazing. So she actually gets kicked out of the monastery for three years. But what happens? Something very good happens. She raises the child um, in a, you know, and then the child eventually becomes a monk, actually. So this child, who, who knows what would have happened, right? It could have, like, the, if the uh, innkeeper's daughter had, if, if this had ended up a different way, the child could have ended up homeless or on the street or who knows, but the same Marina made a very good situation out of a bad one, out of a bad one, uh, as God often transforms very bad situations into good ones. And then much, you know, eventually, like three years later, the abbot lets her back into the monastery because the other monks are feeling bad for her. Again, they still think St. Marina's a hymn at this point. And, but she has to do a lot of, lot of chores and heavy work. And, um, and it isn't until after St. Marina's death that they, uh, that they explore and understand that she was a she, not a he. And so, uh, so many great lessons from the, from her life and from her true aestheticism here. And one of them is that, you know, God reveals the truth in his own time. And God lets the trans lets transformation happen, even you know, uh, even when in the moments, in the periods where you, the, your self denial is most important, those feel the hardest. So one of the most common verses referenced when we're talking about you know, uh, living a life of self denial, living a life of, uh, that is completely of Christ and not of yourself, living an ascetic life is Luke chapter 14, verse 33. And it says, so likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Basically, God is saying, give up everything you have in order to follow me. And we talk about, and you know, I think sometimes this is like one of the most scary verses in the, in the Bible in many ways, because it is all about denying all of what we want in order to truly get what we need. And often the wants and the needs are very much at odds with each other, are very much at odds with each other, right? You wake up and, um, you know, you want to, uh, I don't know, eat a big chocolate cake for breakfast, but really all you need to have a cup of coffee, go on with your day, and then maybe have, you know, a light uh, lunch later. But we, what, sometimes what we want and what we need are very much at odds. Um, and so the life of asceticism is all about decreasing our wants to, innate, to fill our needs, to fill our, our desire of satisfaction and love from Christ. And it's so interesting, right? Because there's such a movement recently, you know, with minimalism and Maria Kondo and all of that for people to give things up. And one of the things she says, is for any of you that have read like Maria Kondo's book on or watched any of her videos or whatever, she says to really understand what you need to keep, take every piece of clothing or in your closet, hold it up to yourself and say, does this bring me joy? And if not, get rid of it. And as Christians, we honestly truly like the, the goal is that really none of those things should be what bring us joy. True joy comes from Christ. True joy comes from Christ. And so you should need and want less and less stuff, less and less of what you think is you, is, a, is you, so that you can have more and more of Christ, more and more of Christ. So what I want to do now is like actually read the verses in Luke that come before 33. There are, again, 33 is the one that says, forsake all that you have to be my disciple, give everything up. Because I think sometimes we think, you know, okay, I get it, aesthetic life, 
you know, move out of my house, sell my car and go live in a cave. Got it. I understand the lesson. I'm going to go log off and, you know, uh, make lunch. And I could say that and end the, end, the, end the session now and we'd all be good. But actually, the ability to deny self, the ability to give things up, the ability to truly understand satisfaction comes from Christ rather than from stuff and pleasures and, and, and wants and all those things requires a lot of preparation. Requires a lot of preparation. Marina, in that, St. Marina, in that moment where she's asked, oh, you impregnated the innkeeper's wife? That is a massive moment. That is a moment of, of fire. 99% of us would have been like, deny right away. No way. Our response is to, in so many simpler things, is to deny, right? That wasn't me. I didn't do that. Oh, there's someone spilled milk on the counter. That's not me. Someone didn't put the dishes away. I didn't do that. I put my dishes away. So the fact that in such a moment of tribulation, she was able to deny herself and do what she knew was best in the longer run for Christ, Took a, was because she had been living this life of asceticism for 10 years with her dad prior to that. And similarly, in the verses prior to Christ saying, forsake all that you have, basically, to be my disciple, he talks about two stories in order to help explain to the disciples what it means to, be, uh, to truly live a virtuous life, to be a disciple. And he, the stories are first about building a tower, second about, build, about going to war. So I'm going to start by reading the first section around building a tower and building a tower that is unfinished. So if you want to read it in your Bible, it's Luke chapter 14, verses 26 to uh, 30 is the first section. It says, if anyone comes to me and, do not, and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So, you, like, that's a hard verse to really swallow, right? But what does it actually mean? You have, to, you have to put yourself down in order to bring Christ up. Your desires, your wants, your self-reflection, self-focus in order to bring Christ up. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, the man began to build and was not able to finish. So whenever I read these verses, I actually think of like when I was in Dubai two years ago. Then you drive around Dubai, and I love Dubai. I'm not putting Dubai down, but you drive around Dubai, and um, there's a lot of massive skyscrapers that are unfinished. They built maybe the uh, you know the metal chafing, and then they built a few floors and then stopped. And it was this desire, I think that represents like this desire for such an opulent place, opulent places, but the lack of truly counting the cost of what will you need to finish it. And so God is saying, you have to count the cost. You have to think through, if you start to think, what's it going to take to finish it? You have to be prepared. The second story that Christ says to the disciples is about going to war. The second story that Christ says is about going to war. So if you, Luke, if you read the second part, Luke chapter 14, verses 31 and 32, Christ says, Or what king going to war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks condition for peace. So who doesn't say, okay, 
I'm ready to go to war with 10,000, but they're coming with twice as many. So like, what's my best strategy here? Right? Us trying to deny ourselves in very many ways is like going to war. It's like going to war. It's like going to war with the devil. It's like going to war with our wants. It's like it, us truly living an ascetic life to enable Christ, just less of us, more of Christ, is a constant battle. And I think a lot of times we think, oh, you know, I'll be fine. I'll, like, in the moment, I'll, you know, I'm fasting, but I will go to the pizza place and I'll just look at the pizza. And then, you know, the pizza comes out and it's hot and it's bubbly and looks yummy and you're like, oh, well, God won't mind if I have one piece. Right? And so, um, we have to prepare ourselves for war. And part of preparing ourselves for war is counting the cost, is understanding, like, what can I do with what I have? And so these two parables really talk about conquering lusts and desires and truly living a virtuous life, both of which are core to an aesthetic life. And they're trying, Christ is trying to set this up in order to say, to truly deny yourself and everything about yourself you know, your, your mother and father, your belongings, your everything. This will help us get to unconquerable strength, but it takes preparation. You can't just wake up one day and say, I'm not tempted by this, I'm not tempted by that. It takes preparation. And I think a lot of times we think in all sorts of things in life that it's, you know, some people are just born with it. Some people are just born with it, right? And if you, like, uh, we were watching a documentary the other day about the runner Usain Bolt, who was won, like, three different Olympic events as a track star, which was, like, unheard of, all gold. And I remember, like, saying to my husband, Joe, I was like, yeah, but he's, he's just, like, naturally gifted. And Joe was like, you have to watch this, because, sure, he's naturally gifted, but he worked insanely hard. And if you watch, like, the Michael Jordan documentary, too, very gifted basketball player worked insanely hard, harder than anyone else at the time. It, they all had to prepare for their moment. It's not just like they're little, they were just, they were just born with it. They were just born with it. And I think sometimes we say, oh, well, some people are just born with the ability to be, to kind of give more, to love more, to judge more, whatever it is, to judge less, I'm sorry. It's not true. It's not true. God gives us all of the tools to get there, to completely deny ourselves in order to let Christ come through, but we have to practice. We have to practice, and we have to prepare. And that is why the church gives us so many things to help us prepare. The Coach gives us a, like the church gives us a coach right through our confessions through with the Buddha gives us servants that are like our trainers gives us so many tools and the more we take advantage of those tools right the more we fast and like tr and practice fasting and challenge ourselves to like okay let me start uh, let me not just eat vegan for the fast, but let me try not to eat until lunch or let me try not to have my coffee or whatever it is. The more we practice, the more it prepares us then for the moments where we have to conquer our lust, where we truly have to live some element of an ascetic life by denying ourselves and letting Christ come through. And oftentimes, I think, we, you know, we wake up and we say, these are the things I've been having challenges with. You know, I've been, uh, I've been having challenges with, like, you know, losing the te my temper with the kids. So today, today's the day I am not going to lose my temper with my kids. And then the moment happens and you're tired and you haven't fully, um, you know, helped understand, like, that a virtuous life and the ability to not lose your temper with your kids also comes from true, from like denying yourself, understanding that contentment comes from Christ, getting to more of an inner peace. And then the, the kids come and they have, I don't know, uh, drawn all over the new hardwood floor and you're, and you can't, you just lose it. 
it's when we're tested that we realize how much we're actually being able to deny ourselves, to live this ascetic life, to let Christ work through us. That is when we see how much we've truly allowed Christ's virtue to live in us. And, and that's, and th if you think about it, think about moments where um, you're tested, right? Think about when, you know, um, you know, we all think our, we're calm, for example, until someone cuts us off on the highway when we're driving, or we all think we're very forgiving until someone, you know, uh, says something horrible about our kids, or we all think we're very, um, you know, loving and non-judgmental until someone like says something mean about us, whatever it is. It's when it is the aesthetic life, the regular practice and preparedness of self-denial, the counting the costs, the preparing for war, that is developed over years of discipline and is tested in moments. And those moments are a reflection of the discipline. They're, a ref they're not just a reflection of your natural state. They're a reflection of how much you've truly allowed Christ to dwell in you. So now let's think back again to the story of Marina, the story of St. Marina. Her virtue, the reason we call her St. Marina the ascetic was she had complete ability to deny herself, everything about herself. Her, her riches, her gender, her, um, and even her innocence. And she developed that over years and years and years in the monastery. And then it was tested in this ridiculously challenging moment. Someone saying, you fathered my daughter's child. And she just said, forgive me, I sinned. That is why we call her St. Marina the ascetic is because she denied every element of her and allowed Christ to work. And this, and this came over many years of time, many years of preparedness and time. So as you think about your life, as you think about your life, as you think about how the aesthetic life um, translates to your life, right? Because I also think that sometimes when we read these verses in the Bible that are very hard to read, like, you know, hate your mother and father, um, or whoever does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple, or, uh, you know, any of those verses. Sometimes they feel very hard to relate to. But in our case, they need to, they are, uh, it is the little practices over time that will allow us to do this more and more. It is the strength and discipline for, um, to get on a spiritual schedule and stick to that spiritual schedule of prayers, matanyas, fasting. It is the uh, using the periods of the fast to truly understand that by overcoming the desires of our stomach, of our tummy, that we are allowing Christ to work more within us. It is the practice, it is the actually understanding that at times being a Christian is a struggle and it should be. And if it isn't, then we are not allow we are not going through the fire of of truly allowing ourselves to reap the benefits of an aesthetic life. So I leave you today with just um, the, the homework and challenge for the week of asking yourself, where can we become intentional? Where can we become intentional about self-denial, allowing Christ to live more in us, and therefore truly reaping the benefits of a life that is less, you know, less Naveen, more Christ. Less us, more him. And how do we from now start counting the costs and preparing for the battle 
that are the moments that test us throughout time. So think through places where you can be more intentional in your life. Whether it's uh, the kindness we give to, to strangers or non-strangers, whether it's the forgiveness we give to those that have ch challenged us or wronged us, whether it's the patience and love we give when, you know, the family is going crazy. Think about moments where we can achieve the benefits of a virtuous life through self-denial and aestheticism in order to truly uh, think about the practices, I'm sorry, that it will allow us to uh, manage those moments of battle. And understand that it takes discipline and, 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 and goals and intentionality to truly achieve uh, the, the virtues of an aesthetic life. Um, so I leave you today, I'll reread just uh, two, a couple of the verses from St. Luke so we can just uh, meditate them on as we leave, as we finish. And again, if you, if you want to go home and read it and think about it, it's again, Luke chapter 14, verse 26 to 30. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sister, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. The hatred there is the self-denial. It's not, and it's, it's, please don't go and start not practice self-love and appreciate who you are and, you know, exercise and start saying all these bad things about yourself. No, it is about the self-denial of your wants and desires for the, the absolute energy, glow, and love of Christ. So thank you. It was very nice to talk to all of you, and I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday.